So I saw a post on um, Reddit this morning that said it had been like 738, I think it said, days since we'd had a new Marvel movie release. And so that is how long I have waited to see a new Marvel movie in the cinemas for the first time. Welcome to my review of Black Widow. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina. Usually there's books behind me because I make bookish content here on this channel, usually twice a week. And then movie reviews, just like this one here at the weekend. Um, I will leave my movie reviews playlist linked up above in case you are looking for something other than Black Widow um, to hear my thoughts on looking for something else to watch in the cinemas this week. There's quite a few new releases that are still playing that I have reviews of, so check out that playlist if you're not here for Black Widow. Um, but yes, I um, am a Marvel fan, in case you can't tell. It took me a little while to get there, but then I had the joy of watching them back to back in IMAX for their like 10th anniversary. That's a whole story. Um, and in that playlist, you'll see movie review videos. Ignore the lack of books behind me. That is gonna be explained coming up in another video very soon. So hopefully it's not too echoey because it's so echoey without the books, but we're trying, we're trying to make it not too echoey. So yes, I just got back, hence why it's dark outside, from seeing Black Widow in Dolby tonight, first showing. Um, the, they had a five o'clock showing in Dolby and a five o'clock showing in regular. IMAX had to wait till six. So that's why I went with Dolby. Um, I probably will end up trying to watch this one in IMAX as well because I do like to do the comparison with the new releases. I did the same with In the Heights. I will leave that video linked up above. But yes, this is um, the first movie release of phase four, I think. Um, I don't know if Spider-Man Far From Home was phase four, if we, it was the end of phase three. I feel like I've seen conflicting views on that one. But yes, this is phase four of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And this film in the timeline falls, well, it, it falls between Civil War and Infinity War. But then again, some sources have said that it actually takes place during Captain America Civil War. So I did watch that to prepare for watching this. So I was kind of in that right phase because this is Natasha Romanoff's origin story. Um, so it is on the long side. It's not as long as, um, the last two Avengers movies, but it is two hours and 13 minutes. And um, this movie, this review will be spoiler free, but there is an end credit scene. I'm not gonna say what it is, but I'm gonna let you know that so that you make sure you stay until the end. I mean, you pretty much know with a Marvel movie that there is going to be an end credit scene, but just to confirm for you, there is an end credit scene and the end credit scene is well worth staying for. No spoilers though. Um, so yeah, so this is her origin story. Um, However, I almost feel like we didn't get enough of the Black Widow and the Natasha that we kind of know and love from the Avengers. But then looking at where it fits in the timeline, there's a reason for that, I would say. There's definitely a reason why she's kind of in the headspace that she's in and why she's not the Natasha that we got to see in Infinity War and Endgame. Um, but yeah, I feel like I would have liked more of her. I mean, from the trailers and the posters, you know that this film also stars Florence Pugh and Rachel Weisz as two other Black Widows um, as part of the, the family that um, Natasha was involved in before she found her Avengers family. And um, some of it is a lot more sort of about them. I would say that this is almost as much about um, Florence Pugh's character, Elena, as it is about Natasha. Um, and, but part of me is like, well, I was expecting more just the Black Widow we know. However, I'm not mad about the fact that we've got more Florence Pugh in here because I'm a big fan of hers. I like just fell in love with her acting in Fighting With My Family. I went to see that film multiple times, mostly because of her, and then loved her in Little Women, you know, love her Instagram stories, but I really, really enjoyed what she did with this. And the writing, in this film when we actually have you know a bit of back and forth between characters a bit more dialogue those those um, sort of scenes where there's more talking and not just kicking and fighting and jumping and flying and 
all the rest of the things that make Marvel Marvel. Um, the writing, I would say, is actually pretty good. There were moments where the whole cinema was laughing, me included, and we know sometimes I don't always laugh at the same time as the rest of the entire cinema, but the whole cinema was laughing, I was laughing, and then there were other points where I feel like their sense of humour was carried across a little bit more because Florence Pugh has most of the, her character has most of the kind of like punchline, witty remarks, sarcastic comments here, there and everywhere. And I think it works really well because she's got that British sense of humour. So even though she is playing somebody who is not British in this film, and I know that she doesn't live full time in the UK, she's still got that British sense of humor and that kind of like British comical timing. And so it worked really well with her. And that was something that was definitely a winner for me. Um, some of the sort of action scenes, I think if you were watching them um, just on a, a regular screen, or if you were watching them too close to a big screen TV or your seat in the cinema was too close, I think you would find them quite like assaulting on the senses. Obviously, the loud parts are very loud. I saw it in Dolby, so it was loud and it was a full cinema. Can we just like take a moment to recognize that I was in a full cinema? There was someone right next to me. There was someone right next to them. There was somebody in every seat in my row. There was somebody in every seat in the row behind me. There was somebody in every seat in the row in front of me. It was weird. Um, but I mean, I was okay because I had my Marvel dress to match my Marvel mask. So I was fine. Um, but yeah, it was a full cinema. And so it was loud. You know, they turn up that volume. I imagine that if when I go and see this in IMAX, I will also think that it's very loud, but then the sort of action scenes in particular were quite chaotic. And so just be warned ahead of time, it is a bit of an assault on the senses with the loudness and the chaoticness of the action scenes. I did sometimes find those action scenes, I did start to almost not switch off, but kind of like lose interest a little bit because you went from having these like funny dialogue scenes to having these action scenes. And it was, a, there was a quite a stark contrast between the two. And I was, you know, enjoying the, the dialogue scenes. And normally I do really enjoy the action scenes, you know, they get my adrenaline going. And I enjoy, you know, when I was watching Captain America Civil War earlier, I was like, wow, like Black Widow does get a lot of decent action scenes in this film. Um, but some of them in this one were just like a bit too much, like either they went on too long or they came, they went to full throttle too suddenly. And so that was like, oh, I was like, all oh, right, okay, I'm ready to get my teeth into something else happening now, I think. Um, and so that, that was just me personally. I will say that like on the whole, I do think you have to have an interest in this character to enjoy that film. Now that, that might seem like an obvious thing to say, but I think that if you're going into one of the more ensemble films, or one of the sort of bigger characters like Incredible Hulk or Captain America or, you know, Thor, um, there's more to kind of take away from it on the whole. There's some humor in there and there's some action in there and there's some interest about that character. I do think that you have to have a little bit of a background about, you know, having seen this character in other films and being a fan of this character in other films because it does go into the whole origin of a Black Widow character, not just Natasha Romanoff, like a Black Widow in general. And so I do think you have to have a level of interest because the film does start off quite slowly. And we sort of pick up where Natasha is kind of wanted for breaking the um, uh, Sokovia, Sarkovia, um, thing that the Minister of Defence signs in Civil War um, and so she's wanted and she's on the run and so there's not a lot going on at the very beginning um, and then it's only when she kind of when our other characters come into play that the film begins to sort of pick up pace a little bit and so I do think you have to have a vested interest in this character in order to kind of get into this film from the beginning. The person next to me clearly did not have that she was she, I didn't really, she did laugh at points, but I think she wasn't 
really into the film. She was on her phone a couple of times. She left to go and get food and was gone for quite a while. She kind of left towards the end and then came back. And so I, that's kind of where I'm like, mm, I do think that you do have to have a bit of a an extra elevated interest. Me, I was so excited about this one. I was so gutted when I thought I wasn't going to be able to see it because obviously everything got cancelled. Um, it was supposed to come out, what, May last year? Oh my goodness. Um, and so I was like ramped up for seeing it in May, you know, ready to order my tickets whenever they came out. Um, so it was nice to see it in a full theater i have to say you know you get that atmosphere um and because she is one of my favorite avengers characters i was just excited to get to know more and to get to see more it wasn't quite what i expected and as i say the pacing was sometimes a little off in parts in very specific ways um but i really like the humor i like the writing and i like florence Pugh, and i really hope that we get to see more from her character from the Marvel Cinematic Universe at some point soon, I really do hope. Um, obviously, I do think that A, you should pay your cinema going money to see this film this week, and B, I think that you should see this film in the big screen, as big a screen as, pos as you possibly can, with as good sound as you possibly can, but don't sit too close to the screen because you will be assaulted your senses will not thank you for it your ears will be buzzing afterwards um so yes there you have it i am a fan of this one i hope you've enjoyed this spoiler free review let me know in comments if you have seen this one and i would be interested in those of you who've done the premiere access at home how was it seeing a brand new marvel film at home for the first time i'd be really interested to hear how that experience compares to say seeing maybe like Captain Marvel or Spider-Man Far From Home, those kind of last couple that we saw back before. That's all I need to say. I will be back with more movie reviews for you next weekend. So make sure you are subscribed. And as I say, that video explaining where my books are right now is coming your way very soon. So hit that notification bell so that you do not miss out. Um, and yes, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I will be back with more bookish content for you in the week and that movie review video for you next weekend. So I will see you then. Thanks for watching.